Hello students, this is MEC 1321 Statics. I'm Dr. Stewart, and this is our third example video for the method of joints. This is example 6.3 from the book, and the problem statement is as follows. Determine the force in each member of the truss shown. Indicate if the members are in tension or compression. Let's look closely at the diagram that we're given and let's analyze that diagram. Let's kind of try to get an idea of what the problem is asking us to do. What are some things that we know looking at this diagram? We know that this is a 2D problem. So if we were to analyze this system. At most, there's three unknowns we could find, we could solve for, if we were to analyze this system altogether. Uh, we're given some dimensional information. We're also given some locations where external loads are applied. Where we actually know their values. Things that we don't know are what's happening at the supports, so what are the reactions at the supports, C and A? And then we're also asked to determine the force that is transmitted in each of the members of this trust. And there are one, two, three, four, five members in this trust. So we've got quite a bit of work on our hands in solving this problem. Now, what do we do? What is the first step that we wanna follow? We want to create a free body diagram of our system where we free the system from its constraints, replacing the supports with reactions. We also want to put together a list of knowns and unknowns, both having the unknowns from our free body diagram, but, the, but also the unknowns overall, everything that we need to find. Let's create our free body diagram. We simplify the trust into some, some points and lines. We replace the support at C, the pin support, with a force CX and CY, and we replace the uh, roller or rocker at A with a force AY. We also uh, put back the dimensions we're given. We put back the knowns that we have. We pretty much just simplify everything here and get our diagram together. Next, let's put together our knowns and unknowns. Uh, the first set of unknowns we have are the reactions from our free body diagram, so AY, uh, CX, and CY. The second batch of unknowns, those are the forces that are transmitted in each of the five members. So that would be FAB, FAD, FDB, FDC, and FBC, right? And then our knowns are the external forces and dimensional information about our points of interest, right? So overall, we have a lot of unknowns that we need to solve. But if we look at our free body diagram, it's a 2D problem. So we have three equations. And in that diagram, there are three unknowns. So we can start with creating equations of equilibrium for this free body diagram and getting three of our unknowns dealt with. So let's do that. Let's create equations of equilibrium for uh, each uh, of our uh, directions of interest. Let's start with the uh, sum of the forces in the x direction. If we go to our diagram in the x direction, we have this 600 newtons, uh, and we also have this CX term. Uh, so let's put that together to get uh, 600 newtons minus CX is equal to zero, right? Uh, and then uh, let's do another equation of equilibrium. Let's do the sum of the moments. And let's do the sum of the moments about point C because that's where, that's a location where two of our unknowns is found. So we're going to choose point C because we have two uh, unknowns at that location. And they'll cancel out. They'll disappear, right? 
When we do that, we end up with the sum of the moments about point C being negative AY times six meters plus uh, 400 newtons times three meters plus 600 newtons times four meters, set that equal to zero. And then lastly, let's do the sum of the forces in the Y direction. Going up to our diagram, what is happening in the Y direction? Well, we have a Y going up, we have this 400 newtons going down, and we have CY going down. Let's create an equation from that. And we end up with the sum of the forces in the Y direction being a Y, minus 400 newtons minus CY is equal to zero. So here we have three equations that we've written. And in those three equations, there are three unknowns. We can solve these three equations. And that's what we do. We solve and find CX is equal to 600 newtons. We find that AY is equal to 600 newtons. And we find that CY is equal to 200 newtons. So we found all of our reactions. Now let's proceed with solving the forces that are transmitted in each member of the truss. To do that, we're going to use the method of joints to analyze each of these individual members. We're going to start with joint A Joint A is the location where we have at least one known and at most two unknowns. Where our known is AY and our unknowns are FAD and FAB. We actually find the length ratios for FAB, finding that we have a 3, 4, 5 uh, triangle. And using those ratios, and we create equations of equilibrium. We solve those equations, we will find that FAB is equal to 750 newtons in compression, and FAD is equal to 450 newtons in tension. Right? That's great. Now that we've analyzed that joint, we want to move on to the next joint, the next location, where we have at least one known and at the most, two unknowns. We end up finding joint D as our next location we're going to analyze. Let's go up to the diagram, remind ourselves of what joint D looks like. So we just analyzed joint A, right? Now we're going to analyze joint D. We know the 600 newtons we also know this force in AD, and the two unknowns that we have are the forces in these two members here, right? So let's create that diagram for joint D. Going down, we create our joint D diagram. Here, we know the 600 newtons. We know the force AD, and our unknowns are the force DB and force DC, where we have some length ratios. Again, using this diagram, we'll create uh, e equations of equilibrium, some of the forces in X and Y. And we'll solve those equations to find FDB is equal to 250 newtons in tension, and FDC is equal to 200 newtons in compression, right? So now we've found another two truss members. So we have found four of the truss member forces, right? And there's five of them. So there's one more location that we want to analyze. And in our case, we're going to analyze joint C. If we go back to our free body diagram, we'll see where that joint is. So we've analyzed A. We've analyzed D. Now let's come here and analyze this joint C so we can find the force in this member. So we do that, creating a 
a free body diagram and look, everything is either in the X or Y direction. Oh, that's awesome. We've got a nice, simple joint to analyze. We create our equations of equilibrium, summing forces in X and Y, and we'll find that FCB is equal to 600 newtons and it is in compression. So uh, we've analyzed the uh, uh, overall system, starting from the top, analyzed the overall system and replaced the supports with their reactions, used equations of equilibrium to find the values of those reactions, moved into the method of joints and analyzed each joint at a time, looking at joints that have at least one known and at most two unknowns and solving for the forces and the members of the truss. And we've completed that, finding those forces uh, in all five members and indicating if they're in tension or compression. And then in summary, and let's remember, let's remind ourselves over all of this concept that in this method of joints, when we're analyzing, we're creating free body diagrams for each of these individual joints. The idea is that if we were to reassemble each of those diagrams, right? So this is a diagram, this is a diagram, this is a diagram, this is a diagram, right? If we are to reassemble those individual diagrams, that the internal forces that are transmitted through the truss will disappear. The forces in those members will not be visible and we'll be left with what we originally started with. We'll be left with our original free body diagram that has just those support reactions. And that's, and that's what we find when we, we build this summary, when we try to compile and snap the Legos back together to create a, a free body diagram. All right, so uh, this concludes our examples for the method of joints. Uh, the book does contain many practice problems for you to try. Uh, definitely try some of the fundamental uh, concept problems that are early in this uh, part of the book so that you can get a hand, a handle on the method of joints. All right, until next time, I'm Dr. Stewart. Good night.